Story time! Many decades ago, in northern Idaho, a single mother dropped her six-year-old son into a plastic tube-like structure protruding from the ground somewhere within a remote area of forest. The diameter of the opening is about 17 inches wide and leads down into the sewer system, which had since been blocked off from the rest of the underground network of tunnels. It is said that the boy died upon impact when he hit the concrete below, but no conclusion could be made, for the crime had not actually been discovered until the mother attempted to throw herself off a bridge the same night she killed her son. She had been grabbed and pulled back before jumping by a man who spotted her while passing in his car, and was miraculously able to get to her in time. After being taken to a hospital, the hysteric woman sobbed as she confessed to dropping her son to his death, and when asked why, she said it was because she believed he had been possessed by a demon. However, according to friends and neighbors, the boy never acted out of the ordinary, but it was in fact the mother who had begun to lose her mind, often complaining about voices of the demons in her house, and how they constantly watched her. Instead of being put in prison, she was committed to a mental hospital, where she soon choked herself to death with a bedsheet. The plastic tube was located, but no adult was big enough to slide through it, so they had to maneuver their way around in the sewers to try and find the boy's body. The area beneath the entrance of the tube was damp and inhabited by slimy green algae, but no body was ever found. There were blood stains where the boy must have landed, and even a tooth that had probably been dislodged upon impact, but no other remains were recovered. Both the blood and the tooth confirmed the identity of the boy. After word had spread about the boy's death in the local area, it became a fad for kids to dare their friends to slide down the tube to find the boy's ghost, which supposedly haunted the sewer. Unfortunately, this led to many injuries, and in some cases, accidental deaths, and the tube had been blocked off by a cement cap. Then kids started finding their way into the sewers by other means, still believing the area was haunted. The rumor of the ghost escalated to the status of urban legend when many children mysteriously disappeared. The survivors reported hearing a soft buzzing sound, but when they tried to approach whatever was making the sound, they found themselves face to face with an unnatural darkness, as if not a single source of light existed in that part of the underground. Some children would be brave enough to venture forward, but their more cowardly friends stayed behind to wait for their return, but they never came back. According to the survivors, they ran back the way they came after seeing a silhouette of a very small child standing just outside the darkness, and they didn't want to wait around to find out what it was. Search parties attempted to locate the children who had gone missing, as well as the infamous darkness, but when they went down there, they discovered nothing but an ordinary segment of the sewer system. Even so, there was a large concrete wall built to block it off in the hopes that no more children would wander around looking for the ghost. The rumor never died, and the ghost was named B because of the buzzing sound that was apparently heard in that area. The boy's real name seemed to have changed over the years due to the story being retold so many times, details were altered and sometimes completely omitted. Despite the plastic entrance being blocked off, kids still dared each other to go near it, and some teenagers even managed to break away a good chunk of the concrete with a sledgehammer. It wasn't big enough for anyone but a small child to fit through, but no one that young ever gathered the courage to even venture that far into the woods, let alone find the tube. The legend of B grew when people began to report speaking to the dead boy, and even catching a glimpse of him. It was said that, if you go to the entrance of the tube in the middle of the night and call down into it, a voice that sounds just like your own will respond back, but in different words. For example, if you were to say, hello? your own voice would call up something like, who's there? After this strange occurrence, if you were to speak into the tube again, the voice of a little boy would answer. Some people decide to run away at this point, but those who chose to stick around claimed to start talking to the child. One 15-year-old boy recounted his experience to anyone and everyone who would listen. Teen. Hello? Teen's voice. Who is there? Teen. Who are you? B's voice. Who are you? Teen. Are you a ghost? B's voice. I don't know. Teen. Can I see you? The boy then said he saw the young child walk into sight and look right up at him. At this point, he became terrified and ran away as fast as he could. When asked what the child looked like, he said that, from what he could see, 
He was pale and had straight, fine, blonde hair, but it had been too far down to make out any other details. Another girl, a young adult, had a similar experience, but instead of running away when she glimpsed the child, she continued to try and converse, curious to see if it really was a ghost. When telling her story, the girl was trembling violently, tears pouring from her eyes as she spoke. Girl. Hello? Girl's voice. Hello. Girl. Who's down there? B's voice. Who are you? Girl. My name is... B's voice. Hello. Girl. Are you okay? B's voice. I'm fine. Girl. Can you show yourself? Just like the teenage boy's story, the figure of a child stepped into view and looked up to meet her eyes. She said she was terrified, but excited to see a real ghost. Girl. Are you hurt? B. No. Girl. Are you able to get out? B. Yes. Girl. Can you come up? The girl turns pale as she describes the child somehow appearing at the base of the tube and crawling upward at an unnatural speed, moving in a lizard-like way. She said that she wanted to jump away, but for some reason she was too scared to move. She then explains the child's appearance. Straight, fine blonde hair that seemed a bit thin, yet it had a healthy shine to it. Ivory skin with a flawless complexion, no scrapes or bruises whatsoever, but it was the eyes that freaked her out. His irises seemed to be such a dark brown, they were almost black, and his pupils were dilated as wide as they could go. Other than that, he looked like an ordinary child, and he wasn't even transparent or surrounded by a ghostly aura. B hadn't come fully out of the tube, but instead was just poking his head up, staring at the girl, who claimed that the child seemed to not have the need to blink. Girl, still quite frightened. Are you okay? B. I'm fine. Girl. Do you want help? B. No, I'm okay. Girl. You're okay being down there? B. Yes, I'm fine. The girl explains how she actually felt happy after seeing B so content, and with a stroke of bravery, she reached out to ruffle the boy's hair. He acted so normal toward the gesture, giving her a smile that truly expressed that he was indeed safe, aside from being dead. Girl, you take care of yourself, alright? B. Okay. After that, the child slipped back down the tube, and somehow disappeared before hitting the concrete floor below. The girl left the forest feeling excited and amazed at having conversed with a real ghost, and she couldn't wait to tell everyone. However, the next night, she said she began seeing B in her home, but never during the day. He'd walk around her house, staring at her as he passed slowly by, and each time he was near, the soft buzzing that gave him his nickname would sound. The girl explained how she would hide from him sometimes, but he never seemed to be looking for her specifically. After about a week of the haunting, she gathered the courage to confront B. Girl, are you okay? B. I'm fine. Girl, are you looking for something? B. Yes. Girl, what are you looking for? B. A mom. Girl, you can't find your mom? B. I don't want my mom. I want a new mom. Even though the girl was still a bit scared of him, he never harmed her or made any sounds unless spoken to, or the strange buzzing that came with his presence. Then something happened that caused her to go into hysterics and rush to the police, to whom she told her story as she sobbed. She had invited her mother over for dinner, for B hadn't shown himself for a few nights, and she assumed he went back to the sewer. However, after eating, they were watching a movie, and the buzzing started again. The girl's mother voiced that there must be a fly in the room, but the girl knew otherwise, and before she could rush her mother out of the house, B entered the room. Looking like a normal boy, save for his eyes, her mother questioned who he was, but the girl wasn't sure how to respond. Her mother looked a bit perturbed when she saw his black eyes, but he sat on her lap and she didn't protest. Still unable to think of what to do, the girl watched her mother give B the attention most people would give a young child, and he seemed to be content. The girl thought that maybe everything was okay since he had never hurt her before, but she quickly discovered that she was wrong. B hugged the mother, and after saying calmly, I want a mom, the woman screamed as she was somehow absorbed into the child's body. B's shirt seemed to seep with crimson blood, and the girl's mother was sucked through the wet fabric as if it were a portal, and once her entire body had been consumed, the bloody stain shrunk back into nothing, leaving his shirt completely dry. He gave the girl a kind smile before she fled the house and went to the police. After that encounter, more details were added to the legend. B would only come up to see you if you invited him up, 
but once you did, you've allowed him to roam around during the night inside your own home, apparently looking for a mother. It was said that he'd absorb any adult woman who had been close to his own mother's age, and then he'd return to his dwelling in the sewer to wait for another invite. These stories would have been debunked rather easily if it wasn't for the disappearances of women that fit the description, who were often the mother of the person who involuntarily invited B to their house. B only revealed his existence to younger people who attempted to talk to him through the plastic tube, which was probably so that he could take their mothers away. Where they went, no one knows. B also would never show himself if there was more than one person at the tube, but would still emit that soft buzzing. Because of this, the legend simply remained a legend, kids telling their friends about their experience, and their friends saying, Nuh-uh, you're lying! It was still the norm to dare your friends to go to the plastic tube, but hardly anyone stayed after B first allows you to see him. Some people will joke and say, Well, it's a good way to get rid of your mom! <laughs>